Hello all, good morning, good evening or good afternoon based on wherever you are. This might be the last part into the non-authentication consumption of API, but let's get over with it. So in today's video, we'll see how to utilize the delete. And then the other thing that we do before we end this series is we will consolidate these different methods as there is similar code so that we can reutilize it into our next series or the coming parts of the series more or less so if you haven't seen the previous videos head up to the api playlist and all the videos will be there um the links of all these videos just related to consumption of apis will also be available in the first pin comment so go ahead and watch them uh before we start if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe it and let's get with it okay so we have seen get we have seen post we have seen put and we have also fixed out whatever our mistake with the headers and now we'll be looking at the delete now when you're trying to delete something and utilize the method delete in this particular api the api provider is suggesting that you provide the url with the id of the record that you want to delete like this and then you will see a response like this when you send it and here it is says get but it surely is delete it gives it should return you a response that the record has been successfully deleted so let's test it out so let's head up to our vs code and in our code unit okay as we were doing in the past let me just collapse all these okay and we will pick the update record because it was also taking a res reference and all so it, it, it becomes a better candidate to copy and paste from so let's copy it and let's paste it here and this time we'll call it as delete record okay so in the delete record the api is a little bit different so let's have a look on that which is this so let me just copy this as it is and paste it here before percentage one and then remove this so that i can append the id of the record where i am in right now but when you look at the delete uh body you don't have to give anything so in this particular case of delete i have to provide nothing from a uh, content perspective so i can just remove this line and rest all will remain as it is right so i'll see set the content header i'll clear it i'll pass the application json as content type in the header coming down to the request I'll pass the content which is set here i'll set the request uri and i'll use the method as delete and that's it i should see a response so let's add the method into the page and then we'll move forward with consolidating these functions i like that once in a while it's good to clean up your code if you're writing something so let's first do and test out the delete uh, this will delete the record and let's use the word delete row okay and then here I'll use the delete record okay and then let's copy this action ref and let's paste it here this then becomes your delete record okay let's go ref okay so if everything goes well we should get the response as it's expected from the api provider and we should see the message as suggested by the api provider here that the status is success and the message is successfully deleted record so let's test it out before we start working on the consolidation piece and then we'll test it out if, if needed, right? OK, 
Okay. It's taking a little bit while to pop up the business central environment, but here we are. So I'm on the first record and I do a delete record. I'm allowing it once, clicking OK, and it says success data one, which is the first record message successfully deleted. So it's that simple. Before we start consolidating it, let me try to delete these records. Can I do multiple delete from the list page? Uh, no, it doesn't seem so. Uh, maybe I haven't done that. Let me try doing this for all the records. And while I'm doing this, I should be able to do it from here and then it should navigate to the next one. Oh, uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. Okay, so I'll pause and I'll delete all these and then we'll consolidate it. Okay, so all the records have been deleted. The idea is that we'll test these out again. Coming back here and let's try to consolidate these methods because that becomes important at this point for me. So at this point, if you look at it, uh, there are certain sections of it. One, which is this, which is setting up the header. And this is more or less same uh, other than when there is a body part where you write something into the payload, right? So let's extract these three into a separate file or separate procedure and we'll call it um, set request headers. Okay, so set request header. Now what the set request header does and let me bring it up so that we can see it. And it's easier to kind of do that way. Okay, so set request header will get the content. Do I actually need the content? Yes, because it's getting set here on the content. And then it is also setting up the rest URI and this. Okay, so the content header has been moved here, which is nice. So we do this. And then I'm trying to replicate the same on others to see what happens. All right. So if I try to paste it here, okay. And if I try to remove the content header, because now that's part of the method, uh, this line is already there. So I can remove it. Clear is there. And this is there. All right. Going forward, I also need somehow to put this line there. So we'll think about it. Let's copy this and move it to the other method also, which is update record. Okay. I put it here and then I remove the header, which then removes these three lines. Okay. Last but not least is our delete record. So let's do it here also. And there's no body on it. So I can just do this this way and remove the content header so all of these will set this and then this will be returned as var. so far so good the only thing that is remaining on the update and create record is a payload or is the body that you're sending so what we can do is in this method we can ask for the uh, let's say payload body text of type text okay and if the payload body text is provided we'll just add it into the content okay so let's move this line from here also to here and payload body okay okay now we only need to do this if there is a payload body so i can make it conditional that if payload body text is not equal to blank then and only then add that payload body into it so now in the get one my payload body will be empty nice in my create one my payload body will come from this method which is this 
so I don't need this nine okay in my update one this is coming from this method so let's take this in here and I don't need this okay last but not least in my delete one my body is empty so this goes like this so we have utilized this function for places and we are just utilizing it to set the request header now the rest piece is more or less if i get the response here that'll do the magic for me right okay so let me copy this 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 and this even this okay into a separate method somehow okay it doesn't show me one but let me create a procedure here and let's call it local procedure um call api endpoint endpoint and then i'll surely pass some variables here okay so to call api endpoint I surely need the request and then the response and and string because once the string is there I'll do whatever I want right so I'll just copy all this because I, I don't need these here to this method okay I'll also copy the client because client is not needed here let's move it here and then let's move all this section from here till here for the time being and I'll show it to you what I'm sending back in this method okay so now it's, it needs content for sure so we'll get the content from here okay once we have the content uh, we need the request URI so let's call the um, API endpoint as text and then I'll utilize this rather than setting up this so then this will be passed as a parameter in this case so I can just cut this and here on the get record I can just keep it right right now okay so I can say call API endpoint from here and then pass the content and then in comma I can pass the thing that I want okay which is this okay it looks a lot cleaner now right because these methods are same the only thing uh, that's different here is it need to give a response back the output string so instead of making it as a variable i'll just convert this to a return type of this okay and do i just need the return type or do i also need the response i'm a little bit confused because in some cases do you want to read the response uh no i guess i'm good there okay so I'll, what I'll do is once this is done, I've got the content, I've set the request URI, I did the client.send, if the response is success code, I'm converting that to an output string, which is needed. I don't need a begin because this handling will happen there in my this. Okay, and then here, if the response quest is itself unsuccessful then i'll generate a error here okay if everything goes well the output string will be returned from here and that will come into this now i can technically do the parse uh, response with the output that i receive from this method because this will be literally sending me the text file or the text variable or the text value of the response so this parse employer response will get things from here which is a text and then parse it 
which makes a lot of sense to me at this point. Okay. So this comes like this and I can actually embed it in one line, but that, uh, let's not make that complex. Okay. Or even if you are comfortable with this, let's do this. Uh, let's. I hate this. I, said, I, I don't hate this, but you know, it's multiple things defined multiple places. So if you would love to do this, just do it this way. I guess I'm okay with it. I'll just cut this from here. The response will come here. And then I'll pass out the string here. Okay. The only thing that is different here or which will vary is the method type. Now, if you remember in the first video, we talked about a data type which have all these or enum which have all these. So let's because it will be dealing with multiple one. Let's create a global one called uh, HTTP method, I guess, if I'm not wrong, enum http method okay that sounds nice right so what i can do here is while i'm okay while i'm calling this api endpoint i can also ask about the should i ask it no i should not i should use a case here and the case would be of HTTP method type is get then is it then no I guess I can just do this here something is wrong uh, case HTTP method of okay so if it's a get then it calls the get that's what we have done till now right that's the only thing now I can set this as get in my this call so I can say okay this is a get call so this becomes get so far so good so I've set up the HTTP method which is a global variable so it will be used here it'll set it to get and it'll call it and then it'll parse it now I like this method because everything that we are repeating we have just moved it to a separate function and that's how I like it, I guess. Let's do transform the this method. So we just need content here. So let's remove the client and let's remove the request and the response. Okay. This becomes my HTTP method as post in this case. So I'll set this up as post. Okay. Once I do that, I'll have to set this on the main function. Okay, so let me cut this here and say if my HTTP method is post, in that case, set my request URI to post. Nice. Okay, so this looks good. Then I don't need any of this because this will be handled there. I just need to, after this, as I did here, Call API endpoint with this and whatever the request URI is. Okay, so let's change this function a little bit and remove this. Okay, which will create a record. So there is no handling that I have to do. What I was doing earlier is putting a message as uh, output text. Out of string so this is what I was doing if this method has an error that will be handled here only if there is a response it will be returning it here okay let's come down to update record what we are doing there okay we don't need client uh, we don't need request and response we will need this variable because that sets it but in this case our HTTP method will change and it will become as put. Okay. So once the HTTP method is set, I did send the request, which is with the payload. 
and then I need to call the API endpoint with the string that I want to set and I'll have just to check where I was doing it I'm doing it here so I'll just cut that and instead of this static URL because for the update record it's a dynamic URL so I'll get it generated here and I don't need these two and I surely need this Okay. now put is the option so I just need to come here and do this thing as put and then that's it okay. so with this uh, this is also done last but not least let's remove the client from here and let's remove these two from here and then let's make this as delete okay okay having said that i'm just looking for the request uri which comes like this so let me just paste it here as it is my endpoint in this case becomes the same so no worries about it and everything else looks cleaner all right. Now I'm happy with kind of the links that have been set here. Right. Now the I forgot to do the delete part here, I guess. But set this up. Right. If my HTTP method type is of delete, then your request dot method becomes delete. Okay, so I'm doing the get record, I'm doing the create record, I'm doing the update record, I'm doing the delete record, and we will be able to utilize the same pattern into our future examples or future scenarios that we are seeing, because the only thing that will change in those scenarios, if they are talking in the same language, is maybe the header part, where we'll have to change something else which is a completely separate function so we can deal with it we can parse uh, we can pass different variables if needed and then this is just setting up the content uh, what is being returned it is setting up the request uri endpoint which is there based on the global http method it is just setting up the request method and then it is doing its bit to send it so if everything looks good at this point let's test it out or maybe Let's split it into a separate code unit altogether. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. But then, okay, let's think about it. If I split it, then I'll have to pass the HTTP method also rather than sending it like this on every, every call. So maybe then this becomes the local for each of the method. And then I just pass this into it. Yeah, that's the only way to do it. So let's cut it from here just to keep it simple. Because I don't like it to interact with the actual code unit, I guess. So what I'm going to do is on the get record, let's set this up. Okay. On the create record, let's set this up. On the update record, let's set this up and also on the delete record let's set it up and then let's pass the http method as a mandate to this so what i can do is http method of type enum http method now once this is passed this will then refer here and then in every scenario that i'm doing i'll have to pass my http method okay that makes it a lot simpler i guess because then i don't have to worry about it because my plan is to keep the interactions with the api all the code around header making the call into a separate code unit so that it doesn't overlap with my execution 
because going forward whatever we'll be doing uh that will be a little bit different than this one because there is no authentication on this one and i would like to keep it separate so that i can reuse the same code going forward okay if you have a better way of doing it let me know into the comment section that's okay i can be completely wrong sometimes on all the times <laughs> Okay, let's split this up. Um, let's create a new code unit. And we call it as uh, SDH API uh, request response, if I can write it. Okay. So this request response is for handling these two methods. Okay, so I'll just cut them out not needed and put it into a separate code unit altogether just because they are going to be called from outside i can set it to to local is there a better way of doing it i know it but if you know it let it put it into the comments do i need to make them global uh no let me know into the comment sections if you know it if you don't even then put a, a comment into it so that i can then tell you how you do it Okay, there. This is API request response, which is of type code unit request response. Oh, yeah. So, what I'm going to do here is wherever there's an error message, I'm going to call my this code unit and live with it. Let it live with it. Okay. So now this becomes my code unit, which is specifically to make the calls. And this is just for that. I would like to rename this to, to, to say this is API MGMT API no auth APMG MGMT. Okay. So this code unit is used for all the scenario where there is no authentication needed, right? So I'm doing a get, create, update, and delete from this. And these are just supporting functions which are needed to do this. All the interaction to API is part of this code unit. If everything goes well, which I hope it should, let me update the permission set. Okay. The permission set should have been updated now. The code unit is there. Okay. Let's publish this. Just to verify that whatever we did in this particular no auth example, no authentication example, is still working and there are no problems in it. Because we refactored our code a little bit. Uh, so, does that refactoring broke anything? Is what we wanted to verify. So, let's go back to demos and first try to get records okay so once you do a get record you are still getting all the records nice can i create a record let's see uh oh it's just the uh, limit from the endpoint so i guess i'll have to reopen this and see is it working now or not it takes some time, some time, but so let's wait for it. Update record. Let's make a call. And the server is busy. It seems too many requests. Okay. So the idea is as the get record works, I'm pretty sure others will work also without any issues. The idea that we tried doing it splitting into different code units is to keep it clean one. And second is to reutilize the same code for our other scenarios right on every request either with authentication of any kind of authentication uh, you will have to set some kind of headers and you will have to make a call and get the response from it so until unless these methods remain same i don't think that there is a need of creating a separate set of code segments just to 
repeat everything so if you see the creation is also working let's see the updation updation is still waiting okay but while i'm doing this if there is a better way of writing the same code or i'm waiting for it if there is a better way of writing the same code or oh, please let me know into the comment section maybe I'll, I'll learn something out of it if you still have some questions i'll be happy to see your questions into the chat and uh, if i did some mistake please correct me into there but i'm pretty sure this will work and you don't have to kind of be restricted to this dummy site which i was using you can find these sites of api examples on the web and just apply the same pattern as we are doing so that you get notified about it okay so this was the last part of the video into the no auth series the code is will be available into the github and the link for the code will also be available in the pinned comment of this video you know the drill if you like the content hit the like button if you think this is shareable and i would urge to at least share it with one person in in our community please do share this video and if you haven't then please do subscribe to this channel and then following up on the similar topic we will talk about the basic auth i'll find out an example or a website which allows us to test out basic auth we'll see how that works which is typically a username password combination and then the last but not least we'll surely talk about if you want to call business central api endpoints from a business central environment so how you do it which only supports oauth at least on business central SaaS. so keep learning and keep sharing and i'll see you sooner than later on the next video with the basic authentication till then have a great day